Hello and welcome to A Celtic World, the channel and podcast that unites the worldwide fan base of Celtic. From St Andrews to St Lucia, and then up to the north of Scotland, from Tongue to Gobbler's Knob in Pennsylvania. Wherever you're watching from, you're part of a Celtic world. And chuckling along with our uh, puerile innuendo, we have Ian in Wales. How's it going, Ian? Not too bad. Gobbler's Knob is not how I expected to, this one to, uh, to start, but you know... You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun time at the moment, so so why why not? Hello. Is, are you familiar with Gobbler's Knob? Uh, not the place. <laughs> and I'll leave it there. <laughs> Maybe the act. Maybe not the, act. the place. Yeah, yeah, Paul, are you familiar with the place? Well, I, the name rings a bell, but I don't, I don't yes. know if it's been in a movie or a TV show. or Punxsutawney Phil. Well, there you go. I, yeah, so... From Groundhog Day. And in a sense, it's Groundhog Day for us as we celebrate Rangers bottling it. Uh, But we'll come on to that in a second. What are we going to talk about today? Well, there's just the three of us. And the menu looks like this. Gurfui is going to be the first section. And eagle-eyed viewers will notice that there is no Celtic socials at the end. That's because the first section is basically going through social media and laughing our asses off about the recent goings on. So that'll be good. After pulling ourselves together, following on from that, we will then go on to talk about the post split fixtures in a bit more sobriety. And then we will discuss the game against Aberdeen, the potentially tough game against the hard Dons. So That'll be fun. There's a bit of a theme running through tonight. Something on your mind, yeah, up on it there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Picking up on it, Paul. What's the name of today's show? We've got a semi. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all there. It's all there. Puerile nonsense from start to finish by the looks of it. Puerile nonsense. Let me just get this thing on. All right, so... Uh, while I'm dithering and, and getting screen share set up and stuff, Ian, just tell us about the circumstances of you uh, learning of the result. Were you watching their game or tell us what happened? Well, I was flicking between uh, them and the Champions League. Um, but I have to say their game was so <laughs> they're so awful that it's like even – it's just difficult. Dundee looked uh, decent, to be fair, but then in the, the second half I was more watching um, – Man City and Real Madrid, and you know, yeah, just like a a, a proper defensive performance from Madrid, and, and then they went through in the penalties. So I was kind of flicking back and forth. I was kind of expecting in that second half for them to kind of do their usual, get a penalty. I think it was Dundee had conceded most amount of penalties in the league, and Rangers had won the most amount. So I was fully expecting like a penalty, but by all accounts, the second half was the same dross as the. The first, Dundee, were the better of the two sides, played well. Not that you'd know that um, if you listened to the post-match from the Rangers manager. Um, so, yeah, it was just, I don't know. And then it was just, I stayed up later than I should because I was just laughing at Twitter because it was just fantastic value. Like, fantastic, fantastic value. And, Paul, you're thousands of miles away so i guess you like me woke up to the good news oh no you didn't tell us your story well so yeah so i um my alarm usually goes off about 6 a.m and i'm usually awake just a little bit before then but uh the body clock must have been starting to get excited because i woke up naturally about 10 to 5 um had a quick look at the uh toilet stop and a quick look at the phone and 82 minutes and it was nil nil i thought oh here we go and then i was like I'll get a look at the BBC commentary and just watch that come in and uh, fully expected the, there was some chat on another group chat saying, I've got 88 minutes for the penalty. And so, yeah, so 10 minutes or so of just sort of spinning my wheels. And then I flicked onto Twitter and the, the, the first tweet I saw was from the official Rangers page. 
and it said for full times the nil nil. I was like, oh, here we go, that's class. And uh, much like Ian, but at the opposite end of the the um, day's spectrum, there was not a chance of me getting a wink of sleep from five a.m. onwards because I basically spent the next hour and a bit <laughs> scrolling Twitter and just enjoying enjoying the stuff that was flowing in until it was finally time to to sort of get up and walk the dogs and get on with my day and obviously i've been dipping in and out of social media during the working day and uh yeah the, the train journey home was uh was a real catch up on on <laughs> you can't keep up with it all like there's literally so yeah, much yeah. Con content we'll touch yeah. it a little bit here but um yeah no it was i did i think i did say that um there's every chance that they could drop points again either that fixture or the st mirren fixture and i stand by the fact they might still drop points in the away match to st mirren but They've, they've just completely, they met, they, and Ian touched on it a few weeks ago without spoiling his thunder a couple of week or two ago, and the headspace is done. Like, they, they just look mentally weak, and we've been here before. So, yeah, um, I didn't really expect um, to get something so positive, but, uh, yeah, really good start to the day. Brilliant start. Well, we're just about to launch into all of the social media stuff. Before we do, a note of caution here from GMAC. GMAC sporting an Ireland flag. I too am GMAC. That's what I'm sort of known as in uh, some circles. Won nothing yet. Aberdeen first and see where that takes us one game at a time. Of course, of course, of course. We're not popping open the champagne just yet. But, you know, you've got to enjoy. Time that's to that's the caveat, Gav. Like, you know, we know there's like, you know, a long way to go and all the rest of it. But trust me, the amount of nonsense we've had to put up with for the last like six to eight weeks let's take a little bit of time to enjoy this because it tastes good i know and it's been a hard season for us it's been emotionally draining and up and down and down and down and agonizing and you know some some among us have even been spitting the dummy out and saying sack the manager and things uh <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, let's move on. To, There's no uh, video stuff. evidence, that sort of thing. Let's enjoy this. Let's enjoy the moment. Michael McKay Hill post here. Uh, I'll make this bigger. And I'm just going to play the visuals for this. Um, just so we can enjoy oh, this. Why does this always happen? Come on. Lots of pointing and shouting and... Everyone saying oh, the same they, thing. They were they were raging. I I turned on for this, but this was a, a good a good watch. They were absolutely furious. Oh, I mean, <laughs> everywhere. he's everywhere. That big ginger boy is about to have a Connery. I saw someone call him. Um, what was it? Um, Kevin Kyle. Yeah, Kevin Kyle. Kevin Kyle's mad. I, I think the thing is this this kind of encapsulates that support though. They've been so deluded for so long. Like if there's a problem with us, we tend to try and address the problem. They've kind of seen signs of stuff. Like I, I was surprised after the uh, Derby game that they were kind of accepting all this moral victory sort of patter. And it's that mm. because they've accepted that sort of moral victory and that sort of narrative and delusion, it leads to that. Because I just think a lot of them simply can't believe I think we've always maintained we've been poor, but they're also poor and they are a poor side. It's just that Clement got a, a tune out of them and they haven't been willing to see that he's kind of been performing above average with the dross. And so I think it's just disbelief with them. It's the hope that kills them. Uh, Tam Selleck, son, I would love to play this, but I'm pretty sure we would get a copyright block on this because it's just Sky Sports highlights set to hey there you with the sad face, come up to my place, but it's very pleasant, so I recommend you watch it. The Shamrock, oh, this is great story. Uh, Paul, you're a particular interested in this, I think. Oh, no, this was a different thing. This is the Dens Park DJ. Can you read that? Shall I make that bigger? Yeah. You need to make that bigger for us to read that. The Dens Park DJ relentlessly mocked the Angry Bears. His playlist, I'm only happy when it rains. The Tears of a Clown, Yellow Submarine, Crimea River, and Rain Town. So it's just glass. It's that kind of, that level of shit housery. That level of shit housery needs to be uh, 
to be applauded. Well, it's good. um it's become a bit of a theme that that um club DJs sort of uh, lay it on to opponents and, and take the piss, but that is first class. It's first class wind up merchant material. Speaking of tears of a clown, did you see this one? Chi Chi McGee. Uh, there's no there is sound to this, but the real humor of it is the way that the hair moves when he speaks. <laughs> if he speaks. Well, you need to find another penny in the meter. Oh, your I got too many things open. Probably. Anyway, that's well you can see that one. Let's move on. Oh yeah, this is the penalty incident. Did you see this, Sutra? Yeah, I mean it's one of those ones that you would fully expect us to have it given against us. Um apparently they reviewed it. I mean, it kind of looks no. like um, you know, there was in the commentary said they thought it deflected off the thigh onto his hand, which would make it not penalty, but that wasn't the case. So I think it was probably just one of those ones that maybe they established it was outside the area and would be a free kick as opposed to a penalty. Um, yeah. But, you know, unless you have the, the VAR audio, you're not going to know. He's right on the line by the looks of it, and they all claimed for it. So many hands I'd shot up. Including John Lundstrom's. He's so used to claiming for penalties. He, his hand shoots up as well. Yeah, watch this. There he goes, go. oh, pen- oh, no. <laughs> oh, wrong ball. <laughs> Look at all the hands go up there. Every single Dundee arm went up there. Interesting. He looks a relief, he looks a relief boy as well. So you you, you know that there's, does, uh, there's definitely concern. Yeah, I saw this stat, Gab, that the, you know, 33 fouls in the last three games and they've had one booking. And also added to this, someone said that they've got three players who are booking away from a suspension. I don't know what players they are, but but obviously, you know, the pattern of assistance continues. The outliers of statistics. And they've been one booking away from a ban for several games, including ours. And you know, I'm, we not, were I our heads. I, I'm not sure if because there was people players listed and then that was refuted and there's some stats oh, to show yeah. that it wasn't the case so if it is the case i haven't seen the players listed and and sort of that backed up but it wouldn't be a huge surprise if that was the case i guess uh-huh. i wonder if we should do another victory parade like we did after the last draw do you think well, that was, I mean, you've already mentioned that, Ian, but to me, that celebration at getting a draw at home against your rivals and talk of a moral victory and all that is just such obvious loser speak. And well, I, 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 I meant, like, you know, as I've alluded to, I did mention it like that to me was a kind of, I'm not sure if their heads have gone. Yeah. I think it's, he's obviously told them something and, you know, he's kind of, he's in full protect the players mode. I think if anyone watches his kind of post-match interviews, he's made a point of saying about Dundee man marking in every single interview he's given. One he even says that they followed him to the bathroom, tried to make like a joke. I was like, I would not be making a joke at this time. So I think it's, yeah, like Henrik McLarson is saying, uh, <laughs> delusion is in the title deeds. And I think their managers kind of go through an orientation process you notice when Clement came in, most people were kind of saying, oh, yeah, he seems like a, a decent enough guy. And then as the months kind of go by, that delusion takes over. He starts to buy into drinking from the cup and all this sort of stuff. And now he's at that point that he's consumed so much delusion that even he himself can't believe what's going on. And the players will be thinking that. I saw a tweet from someone today that said in his last days at Monaco, he was unable to kind of inspire the team for the the title charge and it all fell away because the players fell out with him. And so I think he's probably learned from that, which is why he's kind of relentlessly backing the players, saying that they bossed the game and all this, which is anyone with eyes knows that isn't the case. So he's obviously trying to learn from that. So we'll see if it it works. But we know they're they're mentally fragile. Serial losers. You're spot on, but you, you wonder, you know, you wonder what the messaging is behind closed doors. Now, you would assume it to be something completely different from what he said publicly, but either could you, way... Could, could you do that, though, Paul? Could you actually... Well, 
was going to say, like, that the truth. Uh, well, I, that's the thing. But I was going to say, you know, you can't sugarcoat it to the extent you've gone to the press. You'd have to be a bit harder on them. You, you know, you might not go the whole hog, but that that leads to problems in itself because then you've got players with you know add, you're adding to the delusion, um, and I guess he's hoping just to keep them pumped up long enough to drag themselves towards you know the end of the season. But the fans are absolutely fuming with with, with that interview, um, but because I think that you know they saw how poor the performance was on the back of a really poor performance at Dingwall, and they're daft, aren't they? Like he can't if he comes out and throws them all under the bus. You might as well write off the rest of the season because that, that he's not going to get a reaction. We know that these players are pretty gutless and weak-minded. So, you know, throwing them under the bus with five games to go in a cup semi-final in a few days, he's not going to get... Some, you know, some managers would get a reaction from their players, a positive reaction, a, a sort of, you know, we'll, we'll respond to that. He wouldn't get that from them and he probably knows that. But I don't think he can be in that dressing room with that level of positivity because it's full of no it's one and... Now, the the Huns are absolutely furious that they're, they're like, you know, he's delusional, you know, he, you know, a touch of this and that, the Pedros and all of that. So um, I think, yeah, to your point, they've deluded themselves all season and now they, they, the sort of walls are crumbling down and, and they don't know. They're, they're, they're off. They're pretty much thrown in the towel. Like we, we will all sort of preach caution and the guys in the comments are right to do so as well. And, you know, there's a, there is a bit to go. We're going to have to take it game by game. We're going to have to just concentrate on ourselves. And we've said that for a while. But they've thrown in the towel. I haven't seen a single comment on social media from a Rangers fan that believes they can get back get back into this. And so that tells you a lot about, the, you know, we know a bit about this team, but it tells you a huge amount about the mentality if their fan base is adamant to a man and woman that they haven't got a chance of coming back. Now, we won't take that for granted, but that's damning from them because they've seen it all before. Yeah, I would even say there's a contrast. I mean, I know like some people in the comments have discussed that, you know, Rogers might have been the similar, but I think it's completely different. I think when we add our bad points, I, I kind of disagree with us uh, from Frank. I think when we had our bad points, Rogers was pretty critical and he was like pretty truthful to the extent that like I even felt sometimes he was throwing players under the bus. Yeah. And I was like, he, he needs, yeah, he needs to kind of get a tune out of them. But, you know, in hindsight, that's looking like realism that he's come out with. And then it's ultimately kind of benefited us. Um, so I just think there's a difference. There's obviously been a difference in approach. Um, and I think our approach is, is, is looking so far to have benefited us because we've overcome a couple of the, a couple of the hurdles. Yeah, it's interesting to think of the contrast between him and Rogers. And well, uh, well Rogers just looks so ca like he's been so calm in the last few weeks. Uh, and the the comment that never beats fastened onto it, so we're not telling you anything new here. But that comment with this, we come alive at this time of season. We've all seen that, and we, it, it he's not saying that in a vacuum. Like obviously the players, he's seen that around the dressing room and the training ground. And the fact that if we haven't put a great half in one half, we come out fire in the second half. We did it at Livingston. We did it at home at the weekend. Now you know, that's prefer that's if we did it in the first half, but it's it's great that we're he's obviously the, the, the team are galv like galvanizing when needed. But but that's what he put out in all his interviews. So Rogers, all Rogers interviews, this is when Celtic came alive when it was all the things. And then last night, the main message from Clement is that Dundee were man marking them and it's difficult to play against that man marking and the conditions and stuff like that. And totally I think that's good. that's but that's maybe, you know, that's maybe something to praise Rogers for. The understanding of the way that the press works and the sound bite and the Absolutely. what do you want I think people to remember. And he's not. Ta he's talking to his players. He's talking to his fans when he says Celtic are coming, going to come alive, and he's talking to all of the opposition players as well and putting the wind up them. So uh, I thought that was great. Not that I'm Roger's biggest fan. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know that Rogers has. Oh, I'm going to stop and put myself on mute because I'm going to cough a lot. Ian, I think like you can take up. You're not. You're not Rogers. You've not been Rogers. <laughs> yeah, I, I can take over from the, the. Yeah, I'm not Rogers' biggest fan, but credit where credit's due, and um, with a lot of things. I mean, like I think um, it's no secret, but there may be an apology being drafted. We need to see how it goes over the next five five games. Yeah, well, he did make I mean, 
he did make that kind of bold statement, you know, thanks for yours of you to come out. We'll see you here in May. So he, he put pressure on himself from day one. And he walked back in knowing there was pressure. And, you know, even uh, probably not being as negative on him as, 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 you know, some of us here and some of us in the broader pod and, and out in the fan base. And I would have loved to to to, to see something even more left field and, and hope that that got, had gone well. But I thought, I thought he was a solid appointment and he's, you know, he hasn't had the greatest season, but obviously we can't get away from the injuries. He suffered. That was another thing, Clement, when he banged on about injuries last night and, you know, they've had some, but probably not to the extent we've had. Um, you know, the goalie had a good game, you know, we played, made plenty of chances. I got a reaction. It just didn't hit the back of the net. It, it, it's all total excuse making. So yeah, you'd be, you'd be pretty worried if, you know, if that's the mentality that's feeding through that dressing room, if it, if you were if you were unfortunate enough to be one of them. Here's a stat we're going to return to later in the conversation, if you can remind me. From my head, 60% probability of Celtic winning the league as things stand. Normally, a lot of people in the comments don't like to hear Mahesh's stats because they don't always point in a positive direction. But at least that's relatively positive. But both Celtic and Rangers net XG close enough to 1.5 and dropped points territory for more twists and turns in the league. So remind me to come back to that one later, please. Uh, Let's carry on, shall we, with uh, a few more of these. Another crucial win at the business end of the season. (laughs) With a good one, yeah, fair play. Yeah, that was such a mistake, talking about the moral victory. What other mistakes has this guy made? Was that... It was the celebrations at halftime. Do you think it was a massive error for Rangers to talk down to Dundee so much and get them totally riled up for that victory? Do you think that had any impact? I, I, don't, I don't think it did. You know, I don't think, to be honest with you, Dundee, the, the position they're in and, and kind of how well they've done, I think they're just a good team. Like, Doherty's got them, like, organised and, and playing good football, so I don't think it derailed them. I think all the chat did was derail themselves. Like, many people have pointed out, if they just played it in their first available fixture, which was the Wednesday, they got it over and done with, they'd have probably been focused, you know, they'd have had the focus before the Derby game to try and win that, to make sure they were going in. And they would have probably ended up winning it because they had more motivation. As it happened, you know, the call-offs and then all the stuff. I mean, you you were saying about the playlist from the, the Dundee uh, DJ, the commentary for Rangers TV said, "On oh, we kick off in the shallow end." Do you know what I mean? So it was it was in their heads. It was a was a limiting factor to them, and for Dundee, it's a boost. And it's all created by just all all the nonsense. As if Rangers have never called off a game for a waterlogged pitch and all these sort of things. And like their Clement saying, "Oh." You know, twenty percent of the home games have had to be called off and stuff. A bit of a Benitez kind of fact moment you know so there's there's plenty of things to point to oh, I had a couple of things i was going to say there damn it oh yes uh did you see the official rangers pre-match uh sort of social media post about this game it struck me that it was saying come on we're playing against dundee we can't afford to drop any more points <laughs> i thought well does that not say at all? You don't go into a game thinking, right, lads, here we go. We can't afford to drop any more points. Okay, everyone? No points dropping. None of you are going to contribute to us dropping points today. <laughs> That's not how you win a battle, Paul, is it? Well, it's just just another <clears throat> another example of sort of an aptitude coming out of that place. Um, I didn't see it, but I their whole their whole sort of demeanor in the last few weeks has just been just been one of a spiral and look at the stats was it two wins and eight um now obviously us and Benfica twice are in there but I think the only team that and those, both those wins were against Hibs who let's be honest of Hibs that again they've they've had a shocking sort of spell which has left them in the bottom six and and um a, a fellow Australian is uh he's he'll be lucky to keep his job I would think um you know he, he came in with a, a big reputation and but Montgomery's not been able to get a tune out of them, really. Um, and that's the only team they've beaten in the last eight games. So they've got bigger concerns than 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 sort of, you know, I'm sure Hearts will give them a G up on the weekend um, and, and sort of 
give a little confidence booster and Izzy will be get, getting his boys to roll over and get their bellies tickled and get them in the cup final. But I, I think I think there's, you know, there, it's not without possibility that we could drop points between now and then, but I just think both teams are in completely different mentalities. So, you know, I, I'm feeling reasonably confident after a period of, I was very confident in the Beal times. Obviously, that sort of dipped a bit and um, been sort of quietly confident for, confident for a little while, but obviously the last week has been, I feel like the last week sort of more than made up for the fact we should have beaten them at Ibrox, that we should have won that game. And, and we felt like that was a little pullback. And then obviously we're here from now. A little pullback. But that game, um, it had a sliding doors moment, did it not? Where all of the reality that we're now living could have been completely different. As Mickey in Rome said, whenever it went to 2 2 and the, they, you know, had the crowd behind them and everything. We all had a moment where we thought, Jesus, this game could get away from us, the referee, etc. And then Adamita scored that goal, and that was the goal that got us the draw, effectively. We didn't see the game out, that's disappointing and all that, but we didn't lose that. Do you think we, we have- will look back at that Adamita goal as an absolutely critical moment in the outcome? It's certainly been critical to I, I, what's happened since. Yeah, I I think there's just more critical things to come. I just I think that these last like five five games are not going to be simple, and I think maybe the biggest moments are are still to come. I think it's definitely one of the pivotal ones. But I think then even you look back a, a couple of weeks beforehand when Yang gets sent off because we could have won that Hearts game and we'd have been in a much better position and put the pressure on earlier. So I think there's been a good. I think there's been a good a good few, and I would you know I would worry now that Maeda um, is out for us. Um, so I just think there's just some little you know it, as people are in the comments are saying not done yet, plenty of twists and turns, and we don't know what the, yeah. the biggest moment's going to be, but definitely one of them. Well, it's, I, a, I big, it's a big it's a big moment that has affected the current mood, where we are uh, at the uh, moment, and everything we've well, experienced since that game. I would say in turn though, you know, if if we don't if we're not given a ludicrous penalty against us with Silva's dive, then they don't get back into the game and we probably go in and close it out. So okay. that, that game's got two... Well, but that game's got two turnovers. But to your point about Adam Ida, he has had some massive moments since he came in and there was a lot of either sort of barely bothered to really annoyed about that signing. And, he, you know, Gigi Cullen has absolutely nailed it. Far Park, two goals... Easter Road, two goals, last minute penalty, um, and then he's got that one. He's been a phenomenal addition, and he's really dug in. You can you can go back a bit further, you know. Yeah, Adam Adamida at Far Park, but also Matt O'Reilly at Far Park in the first half of the season. He scores that brilliant volley at the back post and, and digs us out there. So th- there's multiple multiple moments, and you know, there's always that in a season. If you think back to Ange's two mm-hmm. seasons, you've got you know the Tony Ralston header up at Ross County, the Abada late, late goal to beat United. You know, there are, there are moments that stick out at the end of a season. And I think there'll probably be more than usual if we, you know, if we can get this over the line, which hopefully we'll manage that. I think there might be more than usual because the, the season has sort of ebbed and flowed. Um, and as a couple of people in the comments have sort of suggested, and, and even even Frank Brennan, you know, um, has got one right in, in that we've, neither team's been sort of dominant or great. It's just been, you know, a bit of a, sort of stumbling over the line and and at various times, you know, you, you kind of grab a hold of things, but we've got a really good opportunity now and we, we just need to kind of see it through. Okay, well, we'll talk about that again a little bit more. Let's continue wallowing in uh, some social media stuff. Uh, this is a Rangers fella. We spend thousands a season following these shite bags all over Scotland and all over Europe. Half days from work, time off, etc. Don't give us this pish about backing the team because he was... This is what he said in the Sky Sports. Look, today we didn't have anybody with the spark to make a big difference. The team is giving everything, but the fans need to stick behind the team. You know, that's because he was going... asked about the ones at the end, though, Gab. He was specifically asked <clears throat> about, like, you know, the fan reaction, and he was yeah. like, "They just need to stick with us. They just need to." to... He was he was a bit all at sea by that point for that quote. Mm-hmm. And he's it's, always got um, the look of a haunted man, doesn't he? He's got that death stare. Had that since know. he came in, though, to be fair. He's yeah, like, I know. That's just what he looks like. Um, 
I'm surprised nobody's compared you to him. Just stick a pair of glasses on him, Gav. It's another lookalike for you. Um, and I enjoyed. I could scroll up. Who's this Rangers guy with this quote? Um, what's his name? Rob RS Rangers. Rob Rangers. It's pretty. It's pretty good to see a Rangers fan using a Tommy Burns quote as well. I'm, I'm uh, yes, yes. We're there and we're always there. I saw that. So yeah. That's, and then he uh, followed it up with a good old Rangers. Everything from everyone, apart from the players. <laughs> Very good. Oh, here's our friend Celtic Nation. Uh, he says, one of the great football quotes of our time. This has already come up. It's not easy against players who follow you all over the pitch. And even when you go to the toilet, Philippe Clement. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, mean, and, and there's that's a broader brilliant. theme here with him losing the plot. Like there was the ketchup quote the other day. Now you're about banging the sauce, but I don't know what he was on about there. Like a squeezy bottle. Are we talking about Man City as well and comparing like them yeah, to Man City to be watching the Amazon show? One after yeah, another. All over the shop. He's all over the shop. And this is another belter. Yeah. But he's Ian's point, he's missed part. he's missed the tone. It's, it's badly off tone here because the last thing your fan base wants to hear is his managers try to crack jokes when, when he, he paused as well. He paused for a little laugh and there was just silence and he moved on. Like it's guys, guys. I mean, that happens to me every live stream we do. But you know, he's got a different role to fulfil. No, but uh, yeah, that was a very funny one. Uh, Celtic women, by the way, top of the league as well. Yeah. Very much on top of the league, looking down on the Rangers. There's Dano's in the house. Well done to the the Celtic Dano. woman. Yeah. Yeah, another good result. And uh, yeah, they lost a good amount of players as well, didn't they? I mean, I know they brought and the manager, the in, but yeah, the, the, the turnover, the turnover in the women's game is ridiculous because you know there's an opportunity. To, certain clubs, the opportunity to make silly money, so they, uh, they, they, they do, they do jump around a wee bit. But um, yeah, they've done well, and new managers done well since she's come in as well. So uh, yeah, and and this was sort of both Rangers teams imploded last night. They managed to lose their hearts, I think, for the first time ever. So. Could be a good end of season with both both sides of the both sides of the team winning the league. Hopefully, oh, this is something that you sent through, uh, Ian. Just not long. Yeah, ago if, if anyone wants Free to go, Rogers international, think. obviously doing God's work as always. I think so this... Wido's going to do his usual video of yeah. reading all these out. But if you want to get yes. in and have a look at them before he puts his twist on it, um, it's just. I just, it's just a lovely thing to browse if you've got like 10 minutes just to go through them all because you can just feel that that rage. Look at that one. That's heartbreaking almost. <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> I mean, you would almost feel sorry for them. It's just pathetic. I used to think some of these would just be like deep undercover Tims who just like, you know, use this opportunity to go in and their account. But there's just so many of them that, you know, the majority are, are, are genuine. And they always give us the league. We we've never won anything. It's always been gift wrapped, hasn't it? That's what they. Yeah, always say. I, I mean, I think they'd be struggling to make that argument this season. I think we've all admitted that we've been poor, and they've been poor. Uh, so I think I don't think it's a case of you know if they went on to win it, you know, I would say we would have handed it to them because of the lack of investment, not because of on the pitch. Whereas I don't think they would have any. I don't think they've any. They've been given every opportunity. Oops. Didn't mean yeah, well, that. I mean that's their that's their um their MO, isn't yeah. it? That's so funny. They played twice and we last played and they got one point. Who'd have thunk? Oh, don't leave us in. Oh, Gav is struggling there. Gav, you're yeah, thinking maybe. Come in, Gav. Come in, Gav. Well, I'm here. Don't know if you can hear me yeah. yet. Can you hear me yet? Yeah, no, we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Agreed. Sometimes Complacency is the biggest opponent for the split, but I don't, I mean, of all the things you can label at Rogers, I don't think complacency, I mean, that's why I said we've, we've covered the comment of like, this is when we come alive. This is also the time that we've got guys like Cal McGregor, Joe Hart in that dressing room who are going to be I mean, if you think we are saying nothing's won yet, you can guarantee those guys are hammering that into to everyone. Like, we've got actual winners in there who've been been there and done it all. 
according yeah, to and, John and the, McCallum. Nearly all, ne- and nearly mm-hmm. all of them, sorry, Gav, nearly all of them have been over the course. You know, there's a few additions, but nearly, and, and look, if there's an upside to the fact that recruitment's not been great and we haven't brought enough enough extra players in, it's that the players that are there have been over the course, seen it, done it, very least most of them have done it for the last year or two. Uh, uh, you know, like you say, a lot have been over the course for, for a decade. So, yeah, that you're right. That's that's a hundred percent where uh, the mentality is going to be. So I've got no, I've got no concerns with that. Sorry, the Bob Dylan quote was very true. It was very true. It was all over that's Baby not... Blue, wasn't? It? Well, do you agree with that? I mean, I'm sure well, we don't. start talking yeah. about it as I line up the other things to share for the next part of the conversation. It's obviously not all over now, but. If, from their fan base, it's, it is, as I said earlier, um, we'll be more circumspect, but... It'd be criminal for us to lose it now, Paul. Exactly. That's, that's the way it to look at it. We're so far in the driving mm-hmm. seat that it's a, it's a... We've been, you know, ahead and it was kind of criminal to lose that lead and then we've somehow managed to regain it back and now yeah. from this position, given where both teams are, you'd have to say if we lose it now, it's it would be bad. It would be bad. Well, well yeah, I, I, and the thing, the thing is, it's, you know, mid-season, decimated by injuries and various other bits and pieces, Asia Cup, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's lots and lots of time to to make up points. There's literally five games to go. And, yeah, of course, you know, we could, we could you know, any number of things could happen. But you're right. We're, we're utterly in, in control of our own destiny. And, you know, you would expect... At sixty percent probability that it favours us at this moment in time. Sixty <laughs> percent isn't uh, an overstatement. I don't think it's fair to say. Uh, anyway, so this is what the table looks like. We're we're three points ahead, and, and the, the goal number. difference is and is five like goals. Yeah. Point, yeah, yeah. Goal difference is looking good, but you know they play well. We'll come on to that. I think. We've probably all seen the post-split fixtures. This is Celtic's graphic. This is Rangers, not a very nice one. Did you see somebody saying, hey, how come that game kicks off at 6.05? <laughs> yeah. Then it's hard. I did. That's really I did. Good. Is that Easy. true, do you think? Or is that... Well... Because how, how could they say that and not mention, how come one kicks off at 28 o'clock, four minutes past 28 o'clock? You can, you can see it because they're so enraged. And it's probably a... It's probably a Hearts and Rangers fan that's done it. I mean, you know, like as in cut from the same cloth. The thing is, with these, you just don't know. They are that sort of fan base. It's difficult to tell what's parody and what's real. Well, here's a much more sober presentation of the fixtures. Um, Here we have the first one. They play before us the next game. So they're going to have another game before we get to play again. So... Before we play again, we might be level on points. So that's maybe a little bit tempering the excitement of us being in total control of everything. Uh, So then we play against Dundee at Dundee. Then the next fixture is, again, they play before us. Rangers versus Kilmarnock. One o'clock. We play at three at home to Hearts. And then the rest of the fixtures, we all play at the same time. Obviously, the Derby, we play at the same time. And then Rangers, Dundee, Kilmarnock, Celtic, that's played at the same time. And then we go on to Celtic, St. Mirren, Hearts, Rangers, also at the same time. So of the split fixtures, they play twice before we do. We don't play before them at all. That's quite interesting. What else is interesting Sky Sports have run out of interest at this point. <laughs> Does that mean that they think these games are dead rubbers? No, they're probably they're probably waiting to. No, nah, they they haven't been announced. They'll, yeah. they'll 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 take them as the mean team, They'll lead with a team that thinks that, that that's more likely to win the league by that point. Or if it's already done, they'll lead with the team that's won it. So did you did you see your friend um, Hamish? Paul talking about how if they draw the next game. Is that what he's I didn't, but I think I know what you're going to say. If, we, right, if, we drew, if they drew the next game. Because I'm struggling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming 
I didn't see it, but I think and I think I'm gonna cross this enough to go. If they draw the next game and we win both our games before that, we could win the league in the game at our place against Yes. Them. Are you surprised that that's the third post split game, Ian? I am a little bit, so I'm on record yeah, as saying Paul. I thought it would be the. I, I, sorry, Ian, you crack on. No, no, Paul, you're going. I was going to say I, I'm a little bit surprised. I, I'm on record as saying I expected it to be the first or second game, just to completely try and take that away, and that's obviously not accounting for what happened um, in the last two games. Um, I imagine if they drop points in both games, then you know we could have done it sooner. Um, and I'm, the only other thing that surprised me really is that the the, the Dundee St Mirren spin. I thought, like a lot of people, I thought we would be going to St Mirren again rather than Dundee, but and they'd be going to Dundee again. But I guess I guess the SFA and the SPFL or whoever's decided has thought that the meltdown that they caused by being forced to go there in the recent period wasn't worth going over the sort of tracks again. So they've. Uh, They've parked that, and uh, we'll be going to Dundee. Um, and obviously, there's a the usual um, cynical view that you know there's a potential hope that maybe the fixtures off, maybe the pitch is unplayable, maybe that game drifts later, and it gives them a chance to, to rebuild a, a sort of lead. But um, I've not got a tinfoil hat, so I'm uh, I'm not going to go down that. But Ian, your thoughts on split? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I think it's like it's, it's fair enough. It's never perfect, isn't it? There's there was a number. Uh, I think this is probably the most fair they could have been. Um, I think they were obviously under a bit of pressure to release the fixtures before Rangers played Dundee because there was a lot of people asking about you know integrity questions, and I think you know SPFL and SFA have had a good number of those questions asked. Um, yeah, I was surprised. I thought. I didn't think it'd be the first, just because I think it was. I don't think Sky would have wanted that. I definitely thought it's going to be the the second, and I think they probably gambled that Rangers would win the game against Dundee, and that we wouldn't end up in this scenario. Um, so, yeah, we just need need to see. I don't. I don't think they're not good fixtures. They're not bad fixtures. There'll be different challenges. Kilmarnock away is going to be tough for us. Dundee are obviously in good form. That's going to be tough for us. So we we just we just need to see. We just need to see. I'll tell you what I see. I see four hundred and forty three people watching live at the moment. That's a pretty healthy number for us. Little new channel this season. First season going. Uh, most of them are on your Twitter feed. In so, oh, hello everyone. Yes, hello to everyone who's watching. Watching it over lunch, no doubt. If they were to leave a comment, would I see it here? I'm not sure. No idea on the technological architecture of the uh, StreamYard. Well, why don't why don't some people leave a comment? I don't think we'll see it. But somebody who's watching on Ian's uh, Twitter uh, should say hello, and we'll see what happens. Here's a new. Um, let's put this up. Brilliant. Glib Shameless. That's a good name, isn't it? When the onion bears follow the toilet, or the seagulls bark and the caravan moves on. <laughs> Very good. Name cannot be blank. Does that sound like one of your followers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give a shout out to buy tickets for the women's game on Sunday, lads. Well, we've already addressed the women's game, and some of those rotters in our comments were saying... What a load of old pish that the ponytail brigade are and things, but we support our ladies. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's another conversation entirely about us, about the board actually supporting the fans, supporting the women. I mean, I know we, we didn't mm -hmm. massively cover that. That was an issue that no one wants to make an, you know, a, a big deal of now, but I think it's definitely something to revisit in the summer because there's a lot of potential there to, to grow the women's game in Scotland, and I think the board need to support it a bit more. But another discussion for another day. Spot on. Very good. Well, at least the comments are nice and civil today. I was getting a bit concerned by some recent lack of civility in, amongst the commenters. We don't want any personal insults directed either at people on the panel or indeed at each other. We're just, we're all about the love here at the Celtic world. Isn't that right, Paul? Absolutely. Can, can right. I just take this opportunity? That's presumably why you've got a semi. 
Uh, sorry, on you go. On that <laughs> no, I was going to say, let's just all remember that if we do win the league, that Kaiser is getting that mad haircut. I just don't want mm-hmm. us to let that one slip. Let's just, you know, weekly reminder for that one, please. And uh, as you can see there, Craig Young reminding you to rub Gav's bell. I think he means like, uh, thumbs up and subscribe or whatever. Oh, yeah, only 21 licks. likes. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> Dear, oh dear. Carry on. Well, well, let's get back to this. So, yeah, the, that's pretty exciting, the thought of the league wrapping up at the Glasgow Derby. So, is it where, do we think, where do we think the concerns are for us? Let's park them for a bit. Yeah, we've touched that, a lot on them. Where do, we think the, where do we think the possible issues or concerns are for us? For us. I, I genuinely think that Dundee game is going to be difficult. I think Dundee were, were, were pretty decent. Um, I think I've mentioned, but you know, we've got CCV and Hatati back, which are big pluses for us. But I think we're going to see, especially in this run, and the tempo missing from Maeda. Because when Maeda came back after the Asia Cup, he really, I mean, look, his quality is not the best sometimes, if I'm being uh, diplomatic about it. But he does set the tone for the team in terms of that pace and intensity and closing down from the front. So I, I know we got, we, we had a good um, win the, the last game. So I think it's just, Petra looks decent in Dundee, but I think Dundee are dec- a decent, well-organised team. And organisation tends to be the thing that we maybe struggle against the most. So I think it's, a, it's that cliche of one game at a time. And I just don't think you can look too far ahead because if they drop points, it becomes a different dynamic. Uh, you know, if we drop points, it's there's so much change. It's tight. Um, Ian, how did the how did the pitch look after all the sort of mountains and mountains of chat about it? How did it, how did it look in the end in terms of how it last? I look, I mean, it looked it looked decent. Like the 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 irony was, like basically, Rangers have decided to just go route one and like play murder ball and just like lob it in. So for the first twenty minutes, they were just going long, trying to hit people and stuff like that. And Dundee were actually playing pretty successfully on it. So I can only imagine, because it's not been played on right as well. I know it's been waterlogged, but it's not actually been played on. Um, so And they'll have, they'll have spent a bit of time just getting it getting it right to avoid anything. So it looked, looked fine to me. So you think we'll be able to play our natural game on it? Or do we have to like, sort of start Adamida, for example, and maybe go a bit more direct? Or do you think we can play Kyogo and play our natural game? I, I think given the way that... Um, because Rangers played direct and they failed, I think Rogers might look at that and say, "Look, this is a, you know, Hatati O'Reilly Kyogo. You know, let's pass and move and try and get, you know, be a bit more intricate and win it." And I think we can probably do that in the pitch and then save Adamida. You know, you know, as as, as Plan B. Cool. Good to know. All right. So yeah, I mean, I think like everybody else, we're just taking it one game at a time and see what way things fall but I mean it's been an unexpected bonus you have to be honest it's been like Christmas these past few days finding out their results been absolutely fantastic much appreciated assistance from our opponents and uh, speaking of things being much appreciated this too would be much appreciated to the 467 people watching this is a little message for you I love a Celtic world. I love a Celtic If I haven't world. subscribed yet, I, haven't I am going to do it right yet, now. I am going to do it right now. Woohoo. Paul, you said that you thought that was all me doing impressions. Did you honestly think that was my female that was, Filipina? That was my, that was my <laughs> attempt at humor, which obviously missed was the it? mark somewhat. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, between you and Ian, between time. you and Ian, you're in love with the eye. He's always got a picture on his. Twitter feed, and you've been messing about with it doing this stuff. So, I I assume that shortly somebody else that looks a bit like Dickie Attenborough at a younger age will be hosting it on an AI basis, and only some of us will be appearing. Dear, oh dear. And then that we can that'll take out dogs barking, coughing, free frame freezes, all of that. We can we can sort of maybe just park you up, put you out to pasture. One game at a time. Do your Celtic. That's all I'm asking from you. This is glib shameless. All right. Well, one game at a time. What is the next game we're about to play? And how much are you, in looking forward to it? 
Aberdeen. So I am. I think probably we've got the easier of the opposition because I think Hearts, obviously, as much as Naismith likes to like lie down and Abbey's belly tickled, I do think it's an opportunity he'll think to actually win a trophy uh, like for himself. And I think there's one thing about Rangers fans, they do like to think about themselves even if the club is dying, say, for example. Um, so I think we've got the easier one. I think Aberdeen very much in transition. I think they've a, the new manager looks to be coming in. So the guy from Elsborg, I can't remember his name, but I reckon they'll have one eye on that. And I think the directive might be to make sure they stay up. So I don't, as much as there's an opportunity for Aberdeen to win a cup, do they really want to get to the final and then they're in the, the championship? I think there might be they might have one eye on the league safety. Um, so I think we might benefit from that. But again, it's as the cup and anything can happen. I just I just think there's a lot of things aligning for us. But then equally they might have people on the the Aberdeen podcast saying we've got our eyes on the prize for the league now and will we take, you know, will 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 Rogers rest some players uh, for the run in or you know, so we'll we'll need to see. Monty is suggesting I missed an opportunity for a play on words. I think Monty did too. I think he means how much are EWE looking forward to it, as in the match against the Sheep Shaggers. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think um I think that I think the Aberdeen support have voted with their feet because uh I think a ton of them haven't taken tickets and I expect from what I've read and seen that there's going to be a bigger Celtic, a much bigger Celtic. There was always, there was always a, a, a skew to Celtic fans with the original ticket allocation. There was a grumble from Aberdeen fans and the club um, that they didn't get a 50-50 split and, and they've quietly been handing back tickets as far as we can gather. So I expect, um, I think we were going nearly up to the, the sort of end arc on that sort of far north north stand side i expect we'll actually take some of that that kind of behind the goal section as well um so it could almost be sort of two thirds three quarters celtic fans um which would be a pretty sh poor show from the dons as realistically they should be the third biggest club in the country um and uh but that's a, that's the sort of state of affairs like they, they, you know it's a long trek down from them um and, and they've, they've really disappointed in this season. So I, I think a lot of their fans are voting with their feet and, you know, obviously cost of living, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and, and they've decided, actually, I've, I've kind of had enough. I don't really want to traipse down to Glasgow and, you know, all the costs that's involved with that and watch another pumping. Now, I'm, I'm not assuming that it'll be straightforward for us, but you'd think, the pit, you know, we, we our, our record at Hamden's been pretty good lately. It's a big, wide pitch, perfect for playing our own expansive football and you would expect us to to come out firing a bit you know the pressure of the league the consistency and the pressure of the league comes off us but it is a one-off game and, and you've got to go out and, and sort of go all guns blazing so I, I i fancy us to to sort of come out of the traps uh, if, if we're gonna have a, a one half game it's probably going to be first half this week and maybe that's the one that comes out of the hat when they draw which half we're going to play in this week i boldly predict we will play two halves in this game, providing the weather bold. isn't a maelstrom. It is bold, but I'd like to see it. I, I, I suspect this will be quite comfortable. I, I'm very confident about it. Please, Gav. That's... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's foolish. That's foolish. I'm that's not so confident. You say. you say that off air, you say that in the group chat, you don't say that on air. Like, I'm not so confident about the league fixtures, I have to say. just It's maybe because it's so important. The league fixtures are so important. For me, the cup, you know, yeah, it'd be nice. Icing on the cake, as long as you win the league. Nah, but winning the, the cup and losing the league the is nothing. Well, but the, but the but the alternative is you probably hand them two cups, and I'm you know I've got no interest in that. I've got absolutely yeah, no interest. Well, in that. I, I want to win it too, but I just know well, in my heart I'm not going to lose it's all, too much. It's all momentum. It's all momentum, though. It's all momentum. We go in. Yes, if, you know, some of the guys are saying four 0 etc., and you're very confident. But if we go in, have a comfortable victory. And send ourselves in the final. We can park the cup. The cup's sort of waiting for us. It's mm -hmm. a nice end to the season, and 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 sort of we're g'd up, and it's all about the league for the next five weeks. So, um, or four and a half. Um, so yeah, it's it's a massive game, and it's it's a nice break from the league, but it's it's equally as important as far as I'm concerned. Apparently, according to John Clements, the weather will be well. Clement 
on Saturday, according to Michael Fish CSC. John Ketley is a weatherman, and so is Michael Fish, and so is Billy Giles, and so is Ian McCaskill. All right. That's what you tune in for. Wincy Willis. Cutting edge. No, but I'm quoting the song. Well, Remember? I'm just, I'm trying to give a bit of gender diversification and hitting any 80s <laughs> reference that only some of the audience will will actually realise. That's exactly what we go for here. Showing his age, indeed. No problem with that, Henrik. Yeah, so uh, are we going to give any pre um, score predictions for the game? Put your money where your mouth is. After I'd be happy with two nil. I'd be I'd be happy with two nil. I think since CCVs come back, I'm not as worried about losing a daft goal. Like you know, it's and to be if Naroki is there instead of Scales, I would. Sorry, who? Narocki, Narocki. So I'm not Polish, Gav. Not my Polish heritage. Narocki, Narocki, Narocki. Sorry about that. I have it set up. It's an automatic trigger when they hear someone saying Naraki or Navrovsky or anything like that. It just plays by itself. It's nothing to do with me. Win in a clean sheet. 2 0. Come on. 2 0. Paul? I'll go 3 0. Same as Livingston. Same as Livingston. Put them in the same bracket. Uh, well, I'll go 4-0. So we're both I agreeing with just... Frank. 3 or 4-0, yeah, says Frank. Oh, here's, well, here's some more predictions. Let's show them. Frank Brennan, 3 or 4-0. Christophe goes 3, but à 1. Henrik McLarsen. I can't see us keeping a clean sheet in keeping with the theme of today's uh, show. He says 3-1. Th- <laughs> Hopefully, no, no, anyway. Okay, so that's good stuff. All right. Somebody asked earlier if I'd, we'd identified the app that we were talking about for next season, if we could just predict Celtic scores. Is there no app where you can create a little league of you and your chums? And instead of selecting all SPFL games, you just select one team and it's every game that that team plays in the season. That would be awesome if we could do that. But no. we haven't found it yet. It it says it doesn't no. exist. So we've but we've pulled men- up a we've pulled up a blank. So if anyone in the, the in that's co- in the comments or is bo- watching, if you've got a solution, give us a shout and we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. Mickey Moynihan three one. Will McMillan five 0 I like it. Yeah. I think we might be saying uh, Will was right. Paul Hogan's making a good point as well, and, and I should have touched on that when I was saying that the the the, the Don's fans are voting with their feet. It, it's half past twelve on a Saturday, and it's you know there probably is, I bet there isn't even a train that leaves Aberdeen that gets you to to Glasgow and then on to Mount Florida in enough time to meet kickoff. So you're all on there under your own steam cars, you know, or come the night before. So it's, you know, it's not ideal for. Show, showpiece semi-finals is it and it's been an it's handy for me it's for handy for me 7 30 8 p.m on a saturday night absolutely perfect for me in perth and gavin malaysia but not great if you're, yeah, a, well, it's great. If you're not great if you're a sheep shagger coming down from aberdeen yes it's more handy if you're from living in borneo or korea as the two people doing the watch along will be on saturday night i'll be live with dano as we talk about the game and, of course, Korean flooring choices and hairstyles and various other fluffy dogs, things of fascination. Yeah, that's brutal that time coming down for that. I mean, you think of what a terrible season they've had. It's just exhausting. You, you can imagine they're not very motivated. Yeah, so if anyone knows of such an app, otherwise we'll just end up having to play an SPFL prediction one and we'll turn into PLZ soccer. But, uh, it's, not, it's not quite as fun predicting all the games, is it? We want one that's pure Selic. 
All right, gentlemen, well, that just about does it. Ian has to be out of here on the hour, so it's pretty good that we're rounding it off. 490 people watching live. Fantastic. Hello to everyone. Feel free to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Well, the, well, well yeah, the ones that are on Twitter, over to YouTube, like and subscribe. Yeah. Why would they do that, though, if it's on Twitter anyway? Because it might be. Well, they do, they do it because they're not Huns. I think if you were watching this <laughs> on Twitter and didn't go do that, you, you could be a hun. You could be an undercover hun. I'm just going to guilt people into going across to YouTube to like and subscribe. Costs you nothing. There's no adverts. Uh, we're not going to try and squeeze money out of you for what was it I said the other day? Boilers, boner pills, or baldy ball bags. Those are t tend to be the things that people advertise. We don't do any of that. Completely free. Costs you nothing. Support us in our first season. Thanks for being here. And we will reconvene on Monday after the Cup game. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. And thank you, everybody else. Until next time, cheery bye. Yeah.